Worldwide pandemic, riots in every major city, I've discovered that I'm not only Canadian, but also racist, and none of my Russian gear is arriving on time. Suffice to say, everything is completely fucked. My one video per week schedule is off the rails thanks to the apocalyptic status of the current year. So, after hiding in my basement, unable to work on projects for a month, and discovering that General Sam is indeed too fat to hike the Appalachian Trail, I got a message from St. Paul, Minnesota asking for a platoon-sized quick reaction element. I mean, um, I uh, got a strongly worded email from Commando Store. They're actually located in St. Paul. These radical Bujahideen merchantmen have demanded a show of solidarity to their cause as anarchy descends not just in their locality, but also in mine. Commando Store has asked, no, ordered me to shill their mountain house cold weather meals that they foolishly overstocked. No, really, you can get a free turkey tetrazzini meal with this code, and uh, if you add enough water, it'll make your piss smell exactly how the meal tastes, I promise. Anyway, um, receiving an order from such a problematic group of people is not something to take lightly. Fearing for my life, I grab not only my rifle, but the conveniently packed calorie-dense nutrition as I retreated in the woods. The supply package sent by Commando Store included all seven types of MCW meals as well as some snack items. To justify the calories given by each meal, I decided to hike dozens of miles through rough Cascade Mountain backcountry trails for several days. But simply hiking with the essentials is too easy. If I wanted to gain anything besides adjectives to describe delicious cold weather meals, I would have to add some weight to my ruck. So I packed a rifle, magazines, and some funny looking tubes with the total weight of my ruck coming to just shy of 50 pounds. This was really rough going, a real mountain with some serious elevation gains. I made a point to go out in bad weather as cold weather meals should be eaten in cold weather. The rain in and of itself isn't too bad as long as you keep moving, plus I had a rain suit and some wool gear to change into if things got bad. I kept going up the mountain as quick as I could and didn't let up till I started to get close to the top stopping to try the first snack item, the barbecue peanuts, when I got a quick break from the downpour. The peanuts have a parody of the 1,000 yard stair marine from the Battle of In a wee talk. They tasted great and went down nicely with some cold filtered mountain water. The peanut flavor wasn't overcome by the barbecue and I could taste a bit of the garlic and paprika. I should note that the bags these snacks came in kept watertight the whole trip, even after resealing them, but some of the package art didn't survive as the rain melted the paper away. I crept up to the 5,000 feet mark, and I discovered that there was still a deep snowpack. I had reached the end of the trail, but I couldn't tell because of the snow and thought I had just lost the track. With night approaching, I decided to prepare my sleeping area and prepare my first meal instead of continuing a search for the non-existent trail. My dinner was the classic beef stew. Inside, I was greeted by a familiar sight as these cold weather meals appeared to my eyes to be smaller, more condensed versions of Bountain House's normal civilian packages. Instructions are to add hot water to the pouch, stir, and leave sitting for 10 minutes. After following the instructions, I dumped my contents onto my French aluminum mess tray and dug in. It was good. Nice and gooey with no dry powder told me I had mixed it correctly. The beef tasted like beef and the carrots tasted fresh and strong. Though it seemed like the spuds hadn't soaked properly as they seemed dry on the inside. I guess they needed a little longer than 10 minutes. This was an encouraging start, but I really wish I'd brought along some ketchup packets or sauce to go along with it. I finished the whole meal and cleaned my kit. I'd give the beef stew a 6 out of 10. Daylight was starting to fade, and I felt like I needed a little kick in the ass to ready my sleeping area, so I broke out my first Zibby beans. These chocolate-covered espresso beans are packed with caffeine, meaning I could get a dose without preparing hot coffee. I also hoped that their caffeine would keep my bowels running as I still had 6 MREs left to go. Chocolate beans were very crunchy, and water is a definite requirement. But the flavor was great, and it took some restraint to keep my bean intake low to avoid getting the jitters. In my mind, the Zibi beans are a comparable product to the Shloka Cola caffeine chocolate. I give the chocolate espresso beans a 9 out of 10. Very good. On top of my inflated pad, I felt as comfortable as could be. But the strain from the ruck had taken its toll and I had some weird dreams. When are you gonna stop LARPing and listen? Anyway, 
I woke up sore and ready for breakfast. To get myself moving, I decided to try the milk chocolate zippy beans. As you might have expected, the milk chocolate beans tasted sweeter in the first type, but besides that, there wasn't any remarkable difference between the two. Both taste great and kept me moving with a purpose. For breakfast, I broke open the breakfast skillet. The peppers, hash, and sausage tasted wonderful with plenty of scrambled egg chunks. I felt like there was a great balance of salt and pepper already mixed in with the meal, and to me that matters a lot with the flavor of eggs. The eggs themselves left a bit of a powdery residue in my mouth, but it washed away with some cool mountain water. I'd give the breakfast skillet an 8 out of 10. This was much better than the beef stew. On the way down from this mountain, the rain didn't let up. I stopped for a while and did some target shooting on a rocky clearing on the mountain's face. To prevent rust and freaking out passerby on the isolated trail, I kept my rifle seat up with a garbage bag. But once I opened that bag, it only served to trap water, and it was immediately drenched. My Glock was exposed to the elements in its holster the whole time, and suffered even worse. Once I had finished here, I simply repacked and continued down. The trek was steep and I definitely fell on my ass a few times on the muddy trail. Eventually, I stopped in the pouring rain for lunch. As I heated my water for the next meal, the chili mac, I broke open the last variety of zippy beans, the chocolate mocha. This white variety turned out to be the sweetest of the bunch, but I'm a dark chocolate kind of guy so this was a little off-putting to me compared to the other two. They were still good, so in this case don't let my personal opinion on chocolate get in the way of a decision by you. Perhaps it was my imagination, but I thought I could taste a little whipped cream. The rain had really picked up at this point, so I wasn't too keen on filming that much for the Trilly Mac. But it was my favorite meal so far. As the meal reconstituted, the warm water turned into a soft bean meat sauce that I drank from the tin once I was finished with the solid food. The whole mixture was nice and gooey and warmed me up. Though, like the potatoes from the beef stew, I felt like the beans were a little dry on the inside. I'm really trying my damnedest to give the meals extra time to soak, and I'm mixing them appropriately. For my next meal, I swore to double my efforts, and I recommend that you give the meals longer than 10 minutes to soak. I'd give the chili mac an 8 out of 10. As I started to trudge up the second mountain, the rain had intensified, and the sun set before I could ready my sleeping area. To keep warm, I decided to make dinner. There was no obvious water source near this point, so I decided to melt snow to filter. I heated the snow in my tin before filtering it. For dinner, I made the turkey tetrazzini. It was gooey and very salty compared to the past meals. Due to the copious amounts of asparagus, you can be sure that when I crawled out of my water-compromised sleeping bag for the third time that night, shivering and cursing God, my piss smelled divine. Despite the salt and the asparagus, the turkey's meat still retained a distinct taste within the meal. I'd rate it 8 out of 10. The next morning for breakfast, I broke out the egg skillet of cheese. This meal seemed more cube-shaped than the others, with lots of little ham cubes. Unfortunately, to my horror, I discovered that the water from the snow melt must have destroyed my water filter, with 20 miles left to go. I could have boiled water and filtered floating mud with cloth, but without a way to keep my tin reliably clean, it might taint the flavor of the MREs. With a long way to go, I really wished I could just teleport off the mountain. Before I show off these last three MREs, I'd like to show you some of the donated and sponsor provided helmets for the upcoming ballistic tests. See if you can recognize some of them. These last food items include the aforementioned egg skillet, chicken and rice, spaghetti, and finally the spicy almonds. I've been saving the almonds for the last day, ever conscious of a potential for spicy bowel movements, but without a good water source, I didn't touch them on the final march out. Ivan's Fiery Grads, complete with a picture of the famous Donbass warlord Givy, 
are about as hot as the thermobaric rocket that his assassin used to kill him. They taste great, but the ghost pepper almonds, that had some weird ghost busting instructions on the bag, are not for snacking, they're for pranking. Both almonds look identical, so I wholly recommend mixing both of them on a plate when you have guests over. Let's start with the chicken rice MRE. It smells sort of like sweet and sour chicken. The meal is very savory and salty, and rivals the chili mac as my favorite of the bunch. But the green beans had a taste and texture similar to paper, holding this meal from the number one spot. The spaghetti MRE is also very salty, with tomato paste that tastes like a grocery store do-it-yourself pizza kit. It's not really that bad, but the sauce's quality is very low and makes this spaghetti rendition an insult to Italy. Now, lastly, the cheesy skillet. The cheesy skillet requires very little water compared to the other MREs. It tastes similar to the regular egg skillet, but cheesy and hammy instead of sausagey. The peppers are nice. I hope this long video provides you with a guideline to the cold weather meals and helps you decide on what food items you'd like to buy for your own adventures. Thank you for your support during this difficult time, and rest assured, bigger things are on the way.